And here we go. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we warned everybody we were going to go full holiday cheer mode for this. We are. Holiday. We are in, in full festivities here. But, I mean, really, Lenny upped his game so significantly. And I'm like, all right, well, I was going with a whole different vibe. This is how you know we didn't plan this in advance. <laughs> <laughs> By the seat of our pants, as always. Okay. So I, mean, I definitely would have done Mrs. Claus had I known you would be your full on elf. I just didn't think. Full, full elf. I mean, you know, with, uh, I mean, the older I get, the more I more look like Santa Claus, bowl full of jelly, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. But the, uh, but for the moment I am in and I am an elf. I love it. I love it. Well, friends, this is going to be the last time we're talking to you in 2023 which is like crazy and um yeah the next time it's going to be january it's going to be we won't be here the friday before new year's eve we won't we will be back january what is it second second third fourth the sixth january 6th i think is a friday night yep. so um so yeah so we will see you then but we're excited for this episode because we have figured out a way to wrap up the year which we kind of can't I kind of can't believe we did. <laughs> it's hard to look back and review like news stories this way. It's a it's a whole different vibe, you know. It is. It is the uh, it kind of looking at the narrative for for the year. Although there were the, the key trends that we we talk about every week that yeah. were definitely very apparent in uh, our selection of yeah. the top stories. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do, friends, is we are going to count them down. Just so you know, Lenny and I both did lists of five. We were like, these are the five top stories. And we had some overlap, not all overlap, but like the top two or top two. Yeah, top two we were completely aligned on. So we'll start off, we'll count down from seven. And then by the time we get to one and two, it'll be clear, you know, that that we had alignment. Chances are you had alignment too, if you've been loyal listeners. And if you have been, thank you so much. But Lenny, why don't you kick things off with our seven our seventh highest rated story of the year the one that i think maybe we start off by telling people like these are really just what what did we think you know were top stories and why why don't you go ahead and share the first one and why we chose it yeah so very, very researchy very industry um uh taluna acquire metrics lab the uh and my it was the most significant uh consolidation this year there's certainly been other uh other deals as well, but you know, two uh, two large organizations coming together to to form a a very large organization, one that would put them absolutely. Uh, I haven't looked at the rankings, but certainly in the top ten, um, uh, if not the top six in size and revenue of research companies uh, in the world, and the consolidation of technology and sample with service. Um, uh, which is a trend we've been predicting for a very long time. So uh, I think that's a strong signal for where we'll see things continue to progress. Uh, uh, I'm surprised we didn't see more this year, but yet the economic, uh, you know, it, m most of these things are financed by debt. So uh, certainly not a great year for uh, for loans, things like that. So I think that held off some consolidation plays. Uh, signals are that should get better. Uh, in 2024. So I would expect to see more consolidation like this as yeah. we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to track that particular topic in 2024. Like I know I'll be paying attention to it too. And I can't help but wonder if people were distracted. Um, businesses were distracted about how to compete in the AI world that we, we found <laughs> ourselves in. And that again, just took, you know, we talk about it when, you know, in the consumer shopping world, we talk about share of wallet. I wonder if that, you know, kind of took up some of the mental load for a lot of organizations is like, hold up, let's um, let's just make sure that we are competitive in this area. And therefore, uh, maybe consolidation talks got on hold. I don't know. I don't know. I bet there's going to be a lot of acquisitions of some of these AI startups, but yep. that's just uh, that's just another, you know, magic eight ball kind of thing. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll actually we'll touch on that in a minute because I, I, I am aware of several AI startups. Yeah. relatively new companies that actually are already targets for acquisition. So it's yeah. it, it's happening pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, good luck to all of those players in the industry. The next one, uh, story, story number six, if you will, um, that you might have forgotten about it. I know we talked about it in some of our earliest, earliest episodes of The Exchange, but do you all remember when we were, it's so funny because it was like, remember when we were stressed about what Zoom was doing, <laughs> uh, speaking of video calls, and there was this, we found out that Zoom was using our data and our conversations to train their AI 
And the reason why this conversation made it to kind of the, the top, at least in my world, was because we fought back. We were like, oh, no, you don't. And it was one of the first, I think, um, first areas where I saw consumer feedback absolutely yep. having a corporation change course and say, oh, no, 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 sorry. That's not what we're going to do at all. We're going to we're going to rethink our policy. And I just think, you know, power to the consumer who happen to be business professionals largely in this case by saying, oh, no, you don't. So you might be able to mess around with a lot of people, but don't mess around with professionals because we think differently, right? Yeah. Well, and and I, it, I think it was a wonderful uh, kind of populist um uh, revolt kind of indicated exactly. as it relates to to ownership of data. So yeah. uh, you're right; it came from from business, but it was the recognition that wait, no, in this brave new world, uh, data has value, and uh, you know, that's that needs to be factored into things, which is certainly a soapbox I've been on for a very long time, yeah. and you know we all talk about. So, um, and it's it's a minefield we're going to have to continue to navigate in yeah. the world of LLMs that are just feeding, constantly feeding of, of new data sources. Um, how do we navigate all of that? It's, yeah. it's uh, but it was a win, I think from a, from a, uh, from an ethical standpoint, I, yeah. I agree. I think it was a, uh, it was a strong win. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great because if somebody's not paying attention to these things, then, you know, things can go sour. So you want to talk about the next story <laughs> yeah related <laughs> uh so just terrifyingly related <laughs> yeah i mean so just uh, just uh earlier this week um cox communications uh maybe kind of screwed up and inadvertently on their website which they quickly took down uh but admitted that you know devices were monitoring passively monitoring conversations around them and were using that for ad delivery yeah. Now that is, it's been a conspiracy theory for many yeah. years. I don't know about you, but my, we have noticed oddities of having a conversation exactly. all of a sudden being served with ads, but oh no, no, no. It's there's been no, it. there's been no like proof. There's no. been no um, kind of fessing up to it, but we've all seen it. Right. I mean, I remember the first time it happened to me personally, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine about her au pair and how she was going to start to look into au pairs for child care. And then, you know, went home and maybe an hour later, I received an ad for Au Pair America or something yep. like that. I was like, hold up. Like I, that, nope, that is way too coincidental. And I know I called her up and I'm like, this just happened to me. And she goes, oh my gosh, I'll have to check my feed. And within two hours, she also had one in her feed. Yep. And we were like, they're listening. So that was the first time I became aware. And that was, that was years ago. Yep. Yep. Um, but again, like no proof, nobody, owned up to that. And I think we all just accepted that they're, they are listening and never really, anyway, you know, we kind of just were like, it's, yeah, yeah, that's a coincidence. And I know the memes, I think you might've shared one too. About I did. Like <laughs> yeah. Hey, when you're walk past your, your spouse's uh, phone and yell what you want for Christmas, they'll start getting yeah, asked exactly, for it. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for the record, I really want an aura ring, right? I just have been, you know, fascinated with that. My daughter and I've been talking about it. And so I've been like telling, you know, my husband's phone, like, how about that aura ring? Just to see if like, they're going to jump on that. So far, well, no luck, friends. We'll see. And we <laughs> but we say kind of a lighthearted thing, but the reality is that like like the Zoom issue, yeah. Uh, it, it it the the backlash from so this was shared in Variety and it was actually yeah. shared. I saw it originally on a uh, uh, shout out to the, to the research wonks listserv, yeah. which is a bunch of heavy hitters in uh, marketing analytics, particularly advertising. And uh, I was pleased to see that how offended they were. Yeah. Um, and that has been the pushback that I have seen is, is that admitting it of not, oh, that's so cool, but, oh, hell no. Yeah. No, 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 no. And this is from advertising professionals, marketing yeah. advertising professionals. Yeah. Um, and I think that's very indicative. Again, uh, this for years, things have slipped through under terms of service and, and buried yeah. in small print, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, folks are are realizing uh, that th these are commodities that we need to protect and yeah, pay a yeah. little more attention and we can't deliver carte blanche yeah. uh, for these things to be used by these companies. Yeah. Um, it has to be a fair value exchange and fully permissioned. And, yeah. you know, in, in this particularly, like, oh, this, we, we, we kind of suspected it. Yeah. It's yeah. been happening. And 
I, as a individual, I'm, I'm offended. Well, what we have to, what we have to figure out is how offended are we? Because do we like it or do we not like it? Do we, do we like the idea that we might get custom advertising? You know, there's something like it's the algorithm. I like when I go on to Netflix and they seem to know my taste. I enjoy that aspect of an algorithm. I don't like when my social media feeds are commandeered. That bothers me. So I think we have to make decisions as humans. Yes. What we want from this. Do I want them listening? Hell no. I really don't. That makes me very uncomfortable. Do I like targeted ads? In some instances, maybe. Um, but but I think we just have to get mindful and figure out what we want. Because maybe we didn't even know it was an option that we had a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and we should think about it and demand what we want. That is a, it's a, that's a great point. The difference between listening, listening and watching, yeah. um, versus retargeting, yeah, right? Exactly. Of course, you, you know, I, I do a search online and suddenly my feeds are filled with ads related to, uh, right. whatever I was searching for. I get that it's retargeting. Um, and I do have control over that. There are things I can do within my browser Absolutely. to, uh, to, to limit those things. The but this seems far, far, far more intrusive, yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, I don't, you know, my life is not for everybody to listen to, right? Well, and, and it taps into a conversation I know we had when we were talking about um the Ozempic story and Walmart having the shopper data for people who have a, have like an Ozempic prescription, and the next thing you know, they're getting you know, they're getting advertisements for weight loss products or whatever, because they are tying, um, they're seeing, oh, a decline in our shopping based on people who, or in our sales of sugar beverages, sodas, perhaps, based on people who have prescription data. And suddenly, um, you know, that's under scrutiny as well. So all of these things are related, which I think is, you know, the big, the big watch out is, how are companies using the data that they gave gather and is it for our best interest or theirs? Right. It's so in the spirit of the season, right? The, uh, this isn't Santa Claus, right? You better watch out. You know, yeah, well, <laughs> he knows yeah. when you're sleepy, he knows when you're awake, uh, <laughs> Sorry. you know, that's a little creepy. But, thing last time. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to sing anymore, but, but this is really creepy, right? This yeah. is big brother and the line between Santa Claus and big brother, uh, yeah. I think is intent. So, yeah. and, and to your point. So yeah, it's a big story uh, yeah. coming in right at the tail end of the year. I, it'll be interesting to see whether we see um, more significant pushback. I suspect we will. Yeah. Um, uh, our friends at Cox Communications who, who uh, from Atlanta, I, I love Cox. You're, you're great folks. Um, you may have started something with, yeah. uh, with this, uh, this disclosure. Yeah. Uh, and Well, and I mean, for, going good. back to sort of data and analytics, you know, you think about the data that, that people collect in the surveys that they collect, that is somewhat personal. You know, imagine if we were taking, if some people share with us uh, for our grit survey collection or something, they share with us, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, revenue gains and things like things of that nature. Like imagine if, 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 if companies started to take advantage of that, it's just mm-hmm. wrong. So I think there's ethical breaches. And I think that, Anybody in the insights business who collects data needs to to remember where their ethics are and remember like what's okay to use and what's not okay to use and always stay on the, that'll be me preaching, always stay on the right side of that equation, right? right? We have an ethical obligation to protect the data that we collect. So, and, so well, good, good point on that. Just point out from a research standpoint, the idea of listening to audio signals, I mean, Nielsen, you yeah. know, the uh, uh, Arbitron, you know, long history, purple uh, personal people meters, you know, those are opted in, permission yeah. based. There are, are companies that do that. B Grid Media, uh, yeah. you know, they've been at IAX several times and they have a passive listening capability yeah. uh, for audio signals. Shazam. But those yeah. are permissioned. You Go know right. what you're yeah. doing. It, you're going right in and those those walls are built around it. This does not yeah. appear to be that way. Yeah. Don't listen behind my back, man. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. No. Yeah. No eavesdropping or voyeurism. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, and that does segue us into the next topic, which is one that I just love. <laughs> we notice, notice by design how we just flow right into the other. We shared an article. Um, this was, you know, months ago, and it was a Harvard Business Review article. So this is our, you know, what we're up, we're up at our number four, four story, fourth biggest story for the year for us. Yeah. And it was on generative AI anxiety. So the author was Reed Blackman again, Harvard Business Review. 
And what he was, he was talking about um, one of his clients talking about why they need an AI ethical risk program. And the quote was, it's not anything, it's not that anything is on fire. It's that everyone in our organization is holding a flame throw. <laughs> And I remember when we first read that, we we're like, that's such a powerful statement because it's true and it is still yes. true today, if not more so. Like, I feel like maybe we've got double cannons going now. Like, it's just, it feels like that we are all on the edge still of the power of what's been unleashed and what we're becoming cognizant of. So anyway, you know, we're in an interesting time, right? I think I liked this article because I loved hearing that AI anxiety was a thing for mm -hmm. people who are feeling nervous about it or feeling unsettled by it. Like, by the way, other people are too. Like, I think it's always validating to know you're not the only one who feels unrest. Yeah. Um, but also just this concept of the flamethrower. Like, there are people out there who <laughs> who are now equipped, maybe in a way they shouldn't be. I don't know. Yes. And when you have experts uh, and, and leaders in the field saying, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I think we need to pay attention to that, yeah, right? Exactly. The, uh, uh, I mean, it may not, they may not be right, but they certainly have an informed opinion. Um, yeah. And it leads into everything we just talked about, right? The, yeah. the ethical consideration on data privacy and ownership and right. uh, in, in so many other huge, huge implications uh, yeah. on this. And we are in an arms race now. Yeah. Um, the, every major tech platform now has their own AI. Um, yeah. The, it seems like, uh, OpenAI is still the one to beat right yeah. now, but who who knows? That'll change next yeah. week. Yeah. Um, which we should note, it's it's now we're a year. Yeah, one year into yeah. this. No, right? I know. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of insane. So, what is that going to look like uh, a year from now? Um, yeah. And which is, and the anxiety is going to probably continue, which is probably a good segue. Yeah, into yeah. Number two. Yeah, into number three, our third biggest topic. Speak yeah, speaking of anxiety. Oh, well, we didn't oh, really yes, <laughs> three, three, then two. Sorry, I, I got out of yeah, yeah, we're, right. we're still You're on right. three. Yeah, we got this one. We got this one. Yep, yep, yep. We need to stay with number one, what's unsettling, and number two, you know, experts in the field saying, I'm not sure about this. So, you know, what we learned about through all of our AI journey this year was uh, that synthetic data, synthetic participants, synthetic respondents, and actually even more recently, synthetic moderating. Like we've learned that that all became a thing. And there was a post that Steve Phillips uh, put on LinkedIn. This was back in October, bringing up quite a conversation around it. And just the whole like, hey, everybody, listen up. Are we, are we, this is a research guru basically bringing up the conversation saying, we're here. Let's all just talk about it and be mindful of it. So I know we talked about it on our show, but I do think synthetic data and synthetic people or synthetic participants and synthetic moderating, that's a thing that we need to see what's going to happen with that in 2024. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say. I mean, it's, yeah, no, it's, I just rambled yeah. on that one because it hits, an, hits a nerve, right? It, well, and it, yeah, here, here we are. Uh, mm -hmm. I was actually right before this, I was on a demo uh, of a uh, AI driven platform. Uh, mm -hmm. The, I, I don't know if I have permission to say it, so I, I won't. Yeah. The, uh, but they are amassing lots of lots and lots of data and yeah. they will be building out a component where today it, it actually is, is collected from individuals. Um, but at the rate they're going and the level that they're building, they will certainly be able to introduce uh, some type of the synthetic sample modeling component yeah. off of all the data they're building. What, yeah. Of course they will. Um, as everybody has the ability, I was going to say should, I'm not sure if that's exactly the right way to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there will be a role fit for purpose. Um, yeah. I think our con my concern, and I think many people in the research industry would share, uh, finding out what that fit for purpose is, yeah, maybe a pretty rocky road. Um, yeah. The because we don't want to limit ourselves when it's a viable and good and appropriate and ethical uh, and can add value. Um, but we're going to experiment a lot and we may, there may be some really weird, scary, uh, even bad business decisions, uh, yeah. that come as a result of that experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a segue. <laughs> that's a segue. 
There we go. I love when this happens, folks, when it's, we just have a spontaneous segue to, I don't know whether we lean in on the bad business decisions or, you know, the other things right there, but let's talk about the number two story because this is the, um, can I drop F-bombs on this show? This is the WTF moment. I- <laughs> the, the WTF, right. <laughs> this was the what is even happening that hit us pretty hard just early December. So now we're just a few weeks in. Lenny, take it away because you had the popcorn ready before I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was the, uh, the, 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 the Sam Altman drama. Um, Which, for the record, when we made our list, we both called it that. That was really funny. We're both like the Steve Altman drama. So we definitely labeled it a drama. Yes. Um, you know, not made for TV, but sure as heck felt like it, right? <laughs> yes. And I added the, uh, you know, what the F, the WTF is Q. Um, yeah. since, yes, yes, yes. And that's what all that was about, right? Yeah. It was a, so we go back to the, the throughput around the, uh, you know, ethics and guardrails and uh, you know, all of those things uh, yeah. that are happening. Um, and this apparently was that situation where there was a breakthrough in yeah. the next generation of of uh, uh, AI tools and people involved got freaked out and they went to the board and the board said, whoa, and they fired Altman. And then it became this, you know, really dramatic, crazy thing. But fundamentally, regardless of all the drama that went through, the bottom line was that tech, the, the next generation of of AI already exists. Yeah, yeah. It is not public yet. It has been hinted at yet, yeah. and it's it has been hinted at. Altman yeah. has hinted at. He has talked about it to an extent publicly. It is called Q Star, yeah. um, and it very well. If not, if it is not artificial general intelligence it is yeah. a major step towards that and far more advanced than uh the large language models that we are using today yeah and what does that look like yeah um yeah you know it's we, we are in sci-fi territory and yeah. uh we don't know what it's going what it means for business we don't know what it means for the world uh, and, and these are just questions that here, here we are, we must grapple with. Let alone the industry, because if, yes. if I'm, and I have a naive um, understanding of this, just so you all know, because I'm not a developer, um, but in in my understanding, kind of Q, the next level will be that it can learn, right? It can, it can start to emulate human learning, even mm-hmm. if it's in its machine form. With so reasons. With, with reasoning, right? But logical deduction, re- reasonable thinking. So if we have that, um, what does that mean for us in the insights industry? And what I mean by that is all of these people who rushed to get kind of an AI product out there, because everybody wanted to launch their AI product this year. This was like, oh, we're going to get out there. We have this technology. We've been using it for a while. We're now going to kind of double down on getting our AI out there. Well, once this comes out there, what is your AI going to be capable of doing next? Mm-hmm. And who is going to be first to launch something that may have Q integrated into it if Q hits the scene and is is made open source, which... You know, my 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 heart says, oh, please protect that a little bit more, um, you know, more than you did just open AI. But at some point that might that might be released for people to start to build their own models. And then we're all again going to hell in a handbasket, which I think is what we <laughs> I said just last week. Yeah. So I, I saw a headline this morning. I didn't get a chance to read it, but I saw the headline um, that the open AI um, that the the board can override. Yeah the leadership's decision to release a product. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so there is still some concern uh, on maybe we need to slow this down a little bit yeah, uh, yeah. and make sure that we know what the hell we're doing. Uh, It'd be a great time. If you are a stockholder of, of any of the companies involved in this and you get those share reports that say, do you want to vote? This might be a good time to start to track what you're voting on. I'm just saying. <laughs> It may be, it may be that, well, who knows, but the genie, the genie is out of the bottle. Yeah. So uh, the question is whether we can kind of constrain it or not. Um, yeah. And I don't mean that that sounds negative because there is some scary elements to that, Yeah. but, but even just think about the, the long tail of just business implications um, across the board. Uh, we, you know, we, we've discovered already that the LLMs are not perfect for, for everything. They do something yeah. really great and they add a lot of value and some things they don't, or they don't yet. And, yeah. uh, and as we unleash another, uh, version, 
Yeah. Uh, I think we just need to be cognizant of that. Uh, and what are the implications for? And and the ultimate goal of does this help us do our jobs better? Will yes. that new technology help us become really strong researchers? Like really strong. Like I, you know what's what are the possibilities to integrate technology into what you do to make them better? To be either a better service to somebody else in the industry, somebody else on the you know industry supply chain, if you will, or or even just within your organization. How can this technology help us evolve into the future of insights? That's the goal, right? So, yep. It's cool stuff. Yep, it is. Uh, and sorry, I had to send a Slack message real quick. So, uh, yep. <laughs> I didn't even notice. The, I was talking. I was talking. Uh, I, I, yeah. um, so, that number one, final number one, final number one. Uh, my, my virtual background is moving. So, my finger is up for those of you who can't see. Number one, number one, let's. Too bad we can't pull the world and say, what do you think it was? Because yeah. Lenny and I, hands down, were like, yeah, we know exactly what it was. And we didn't talk, folks. So uh, no, we, did not. we did this. We, we, were, we were isolated. Um, so this was uh, drum roll. Yep, drum roll, drum roll. Do -do 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 -do. Bach eight. Bach Bach eight. Yeah. So, I mean, really, like lit quite literally, hats off to the team at Echo. Um, that whole... Uh, kind of in-depth reporting of Moss and the bot farms overseas that, and the players in that business and um, just really causing, you know, damage to our data quality um, across the board, even within our own industry, uh, just all of it, the undercover work there. So like hats off because it's important Um important information for us to all have, but also really great, like investigative reporting. So, you know, the contact content geek in me loved it. It was like a little bit of journalism in a world of insights. And yep. I mean, psh, good and stuff it, there. It raised awareness of an issue that our, our yeah. good friend, former uh, Green Booker, uh, Matt Gershner, um, who now works with Research Defender, who was you know, recently acquired. Matt's been, excuse me, um, releasing stats that they're seeing internally on uh on fraud on linkedin yeah. and yeah. Uh, and i'm glad that he's doing it even though it's he's trying to sell a product to fix it but still the the, yeah. the data is there uh the, the demo i was telling you about some minute ago uh you know they are collecting survey data and through the standard means i don't i don't want anybody under the bus here yeah 30 percent of it is bad um yeah. they cap shit they capture it yeah. uh, identify it because they are using video and yeah. uh, to record the the responses yeah. so um yeah so just the signals and, and this is yeah, you know, we, cannot, we cannot take for granted that um even videos responses wouldn't be um you know falsified you know i remember even in qualitative some a large study that i was doing i just happened to recognize the same participant and i was like yeah that that is somebody that I've seen before. And they they were in disguise, which was very like individualized <laughs> fraud. But I was like, literally, they were, and we had a whole big conversation in the QRCA. It circled around in the forum, I think, where we were all like, have you seen this person? Like it was a thing. So qualitative isn't even safe from um from this type of fraudulent responses. And it's up to it's up to each research provider to make sure that they are protecting the users of their services, just like we do in our grid. I'm not certain we've, you know, we have a new grid survey in the field right now, and we will be doing due diligence to make sure that fraudulent responses are booted. So yeah. what you have to do, you don't take it lightly that your data um, is clean. You have to defend it. You, you do. And, and understand that it is not an isolated, you know, uh, issue. It is done at scale. Um, uh, there are businesses set up to, uh, to exploit weaknesses in yeah. our systems, uh, yeah. and they make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, that's right. It, it, it's easy to think what we're, we're only paying and whole other issue that we're, we underpay surveys respondents, but you know, we only pay a quarter each. Okay. That seems meaningless to an individual, but at the volume of yeah. business that we do, yeah. uh, thirty percent of you know two hundred thousand. Let's call it half a million surveys a day at twenty five cents pop. That's a meaningful number daily. Yeah, so yeah. That that builds wealth for yeah. someone in a third world country that where a lot of these things are coming yeah. from. You know, they're driving around in a Ferrari. 
So. Well, and, and let's hope that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, the pressure that vendors were under, that if they were using AI, that, that should drive their prices down because they have a time savings. Let's just say, instead of trying to, you know, save the money because of the time savings from AI, let's just reallocate that money towards the people that really deserve the money, which are legitimate human beings taking part in survey research and, and up that participant experience so that, um, you know, we can actually have good quality responses from people that are valid and confirmed. Yes. And utilizing technologies to weed out the bad actors. So, uh, and there are, there are many options out there. I even saw realize, um, you know, facial, uh, recognition, uh, they've rolled out a component with facial recognition built in. There's lots of variations on a theme, right? Lots of ways to try and yeah. solve this problem. Um, yeah. But it is a problem that has to be solved. And yeah. and yes, probably the most critical issue, because uh, the, the throughput through all of this, in my mind, is data and the value yeah. of data. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, to sound, not to sound too crass, but... Uh, well, never mind. I won't. I was gonna. Say, I was gonna be really crass. <laughs> but you can use self censoring. I, I yes, I know. I potty mouth at Christmas. Santa's watching. Um, as is uh, my smartphone. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, we don't need to pollute our supply chain. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you if you ask me to kind of recap the year, uh, really we're, what we're talking about is ethics and integrity across almost all of those stories. Yes. Right. We uh, we are in a world when that is becoming more and more important to act ethically and responsibly and protect the integrity of our work and consumer data. So well put. And there there's our our wish uh, for the new year for yes. everybody is to focus yes. on uh, on ethics and integrity and and just do no evil. Let's just yeah, do, yeah. do good, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, do good in the world. Do good in the world. All yes, right. as we hope that we are doing with all of you listening. So thank you for tuning in. I mean, you have really made us, um, us quite happy with your listenership. So we're grateful for that. Um, hats yeah. off to all of you for the end of the year. Looking forward to a 2024. Oh, yes, we can do that. Looking hats off. To, hats <laughs> off or caps or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. To a 2024 um, filled with all the good stuff. And we will yes. we will stay abreast of it for you. So feel free to relax over the holiday break. We'll be back in January with, with all the stories you missed. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. It, happy, 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 happy holidays. And uh, happy new year to everybody. So, yeah. yeah. Take care. Bye-bye, all. Bye.